Hello and thank you for joining me today. I'm going to have a quick look at my Citizen Promaster Alticron and we'll take a look at the specifications and I'll also show you how to use the features within this watch. It is pretty feature packed. It's a bit of an adventurous watch, something like a, a Bear Grylls I think would enjoy this timepiece. Um, and that is because it has an altimeter so it can measure your altitude for up to 10,000 meters minus 300 meters it also has an electronic compass. Um, it is 200 meters in terms of water resistance. And it is 46 millimeters, so it's a bit of a beast, um, but feature packed, so let's get into it. So first of all, quite simply to set the time, it works pretty much like any other normal watch. Crown out one click, clockwise does the date as you can see. Crown out all the way, you do the time. Okay, crown in. So how do we use the electronic compass? Well, quite simply, we have this bezel here, which is bi-directional. Um, you press this top push button here, and then this small hand is going to go and find north for us. I should really keep the watch flat, but there we are. It's found north, magnetic north, which is here. I then turn the bezel and line up N with the uh, hand. And as you can see, I've now got my bearings. I know north is this way. You have to be quite quick when you line the bezel up with the hand because this uses a lot of energy from the cell. So this will shoot back to the top of the watch at 12 o'clock in a moment. It's as simple as that. There we are, it's just reset. Okay, so I'm gonna do that again. Press the top push button. Electronic compass is now going to go in use and it's going to find north. Yeah, so basically spot on. Um, and so therefore if I was to turn the watch, we should get some sort of movement here. Okay, so that is how we use the electronic compass. Really quite simple. So magnetic fields do affect the reading of finding north with this compass. Okay, so now to use the altimeter. Um, now, I'm just gonna put the bezel just north back to the top. Okay, so this dial does look quite complicated. However, it really isn't. I mean, what we need to keep an eye on is if you look on the inside of the bezel, we have this zero here at 12 o'clock. And in meters here, you've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and back to 100. So we have 100 meters measured around the inside of the bezel in increments of one meter. And then you've got this inner ring here with a yellow zero. The, this is hundreds of meters. So 100, not marked, but then you can see 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, and 900. So basically, if I was uh, climbing a mountain, this big hand here would move around the inside of the bezel. The higher I went, the further around it would go until it got to the top here. So that would be 100 meters. Once that would happen, this small red hand would jump to the first indicator to say I was 100 meters above sea level. The big hand would go around again. And the red hand here would go to 200 meters and so on and so on until this little red hand here got to 900 meters. Once the big hand goes round again, that would mean I'm 1,000 meters above sea level. And then this dial here comes into play. So this red hand would be at zero, and then it would go to the first dash, meaning 1,000. And the whole process repeats until you get to 10,000 meters. So let's have a little look. Quite simply, press the bottom push button. This sensor here is reading the atmospheric pressure around me, I suppose. And it's now gonna go and find and tell me my altitude. Okay. So as we can see, we'll read the largest scale first. So if we look at the thousand scale, you can see that's still on zero. My 100 scale, still on zero. So now we go to the outer scale so we can see that I am roughly 71.2 meters above sea level. And it's as simple as that. And if you were using this feature, it will continuously tell you your altitude 
for 12 hours. Let's take a look at it on the wrist. My wrists are about seven inches and this is a 46 millimeter uh, case. So it is quite substantial, but the way the crowns are positioned and the sensor that reads your, your atmospheric pressure, even though it's a big watch, you know, nothing's gonna dig into your wrist. So I think that's well designed and it doesn't look too bad. Usually with an altimeter on a watch, it is on a watch which has a digital screen. So to have it analog, I think is quite clever and more complicated to create. I am a huge fan of these big chunky rubber straps that are that have the logos on. So things like this Promaster, obviously a very famous citizen family of watch. And yeah, I love stuff like this. Very comfortable, really substantial. Citizen on the buckle there. Promaster logo here. Yeah, this is a this is a great timepiece. Full of features, looks fantastic. It's £449. Citizen a few years ago did do another version of the Altacron. Um, it was a super titanium case as opposed to stainless steel like this one. And the differences were that the bezel was unlocked by screwing, unscrewing the top crown here. Sorry, push button. You unscrew it, the crown will pop out, you could turn it, and then that would move the bezel, uh, which would be inside the case. And that had sapphire crystal glass. This model does not. And also the push button, which works the electronic compass was also a screw down. So it was a bit more substantial for sure, the previous model, but that was, I think, £699. Um, this one, £449. It's not quite as robust then, I suppose, as the previous model, but it's still a great piece of technology, I think. Remember, eco drive, so no batteries powered by light. Let me know what you guys think of this watch. I'm certainly no adventurer. Um, would this be practical in real, in real terms? actually used climbing up a mountain. Let me know what you think below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. There'll be more content coming soon.